there. Uh, my name is Amanda, and I am working uh, with my partner, Jennifer. We are both nurse, women men's health nurse practitioner students at the University of Colorado in Denver. Uh, we are putting together a, an in, a informational session for women who are pregnant and are going to be giving themselves um, injections to prevent blood clots during pregnancy. So if you are one of these people, um, of these women who are going to be giving yourself injections, hopefully you will find this helpful. Organizations such as the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have deemed that have made a statement that uh, heparin and low molecular weight heparin, i.e. low minox, are both very safe to use in pregnancy um, based on the fact that the, these, both of these heparins don't cross um, through the placenta to the baby. There are some risks that we should go through um, that, you should, that are going to be more mother risks versus baby risks when you're taking these medications. So we'll review some of the signs and symptoms of those complications that you should watch out for and make sure that you tell your, your doctor or your midwife um, if you're having them and then they can look into um, whether or not to keep you on the medication. Risk factors for deep vein thrombosis, um, which is blood clots in your legs, or thromboembolic disorders, um, which would just basically saying reasons that you might be high risk for getting blood clots would be hereditary thrombophilia, um, which would be such as factor V Leiden mutation, um, the anti-thrombin 3 deficiency, protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency, hyperhomocysteinemia, prothrombin gene mutation, prior history of having a deep vein thrombosis or blood clot in your leg, mechanical heart valve, atrial fibrillation, um, trauma or prolonged immobilization or major surgery could be another reason why they might have ordered you to be on these medications or if you have the antiphospholipid syndrome. All of these may be indications that you would need to be on, on blood thinners. Let's talk a little bit about blood thinners. Um, there's basically two different kinds that they would use to, that you would need to give yourself injections in order to prevent blood clots from forming during your pregnancy. Um, one of them is just the run-of-the-mill heparin. Um, this one is um, approved for pregnancy use, as is the low molecular weight heparin, which is a longer acting heparin. Um, another name for that would be Lovenox. So you have the heparin and then you have Lovenox, which is the trade name. So this would be giving yourselves injections and um, being able to draw up the medication if you were going to be doing heparin, as evidenced in, as we demonstrated, will be demonstrated in our video. Um, and then the Lovenox um, would be, usually women give it to themselves once a day or twice a day. Um, They'll be monitoring your blood values to make sure you're within, whether it's prophylactic dose or therapeutic dosing, depending on what your doctor feels is needed for your medical condition. The lined areas are areas that you'll be able to use um, to give yourself injections during your pregnancy. So as you can see around the umbilicus, around your belly button, you can give yourself injections and also on the sides of your thighs but the backs of your arms and your thighs, your buttocks, and kind of your flank areas on your sides are all potential areas that you can use and rotate your injections. Uh, select your injection site where there's not already a bruise or a knot or a blood vessel visible, and we recommend that you do rotate your site um, based on the um, acceptable areas that would be uh, optimal areas to inject yourself. Um, Typically, the abdominal and the upper arm sites do actually offer the best absorption um, for these medications. How do you get the me medication from here, into here, into here? So basically, heparin comes in these little vials. You just remove the lid like this, take the lid off of your syringe, and most of the time for heparin, it's either 5,000 units or 10,000 units. Some women are actually on a little bit higher doses, but normally 
5,000 to 10,000 is the usual dosage. So typically it comes in 10,000. So medically, or doing math, um, for 5,000 you would just go down to the 0.5 or half of the cc and puncture the vial. Then you would push the air of the amount that you just drew back and then draw then the medication into the syringe to then complete the uh, entire half cc for the 5,000 or the entire cc for a 10,000 um, amount of heparin. So then in order to actually inject yourself, You would choose your site based on a rotational, looking at the um, acceptable areas. So gently cleanse um, the site with an alcohol wipe, um, but don't rub briskly. Um, then pinch about a half an inch of the skin between your thumbs and your fingers, um, and insert the tip of the needle at a 90 degree angle into the fold, and then slowly push in the leg the length down to the syringe hub so the entire amount of the medication should be administered into your skin. Then push the plunger of the syringe until all the medication is injected. As you withdraw the, the needle, let go of the pinch of the skin. Hold a cotton ball on the site for several minutes to decrease bruising. And then you can kind of see that there are some areas of bruising, which is really normal. And I'm going to get this side. This is a good bruise over there. Holy moly. But that's just unfortunately the side effect of this therapy. All right, so this is actually a sharps container, and it comes with your at-home kit if you're on Lovenox, or sometimes when you go and fill your prescription at the pharmacy, and if you're picking up heparin, they'll give you syringes. You can also pick up a sharps container as well. So um, you would just then put it in here to help um, then prevent um, any sharps from being put into the trash and help for safety of our garbage collectors. Um, you can then, when you're done with your whole um, round of injecting yourself with these medications, certainly just bring this back to your medical provider and they can dispose of it properly for biomedical waste. So reasons that you would need to call your office or your nurse practitioner um, at on call um, is if, if you notice any of the following signs and symptoms develop. Um, bleeding from your nose or gums that's lasting longer than 15 minutes, uh, if you have any vaginal bleeding, um, if you have any increased bruising. Now it is normal, especially at first, if you have bruises um, at the injection site, and these can actually hang out for as long as six weeks. So if it's something that's concerning to you, you can always have any of your providers evaluate some of your uh, bruising sites to, to see if it's something that's excessive. Um, any injection sites, excuse me, um, if you notice any red or dark brown colored urine, if you have any red or black colored sticky foul smelling bowel movements, if you have severe or prolonged headache that does not resolve with Tylenol and or caffeine, it's also associated with weakness, dizziness, or faintness. This is definitely something that you don't want to hesitate and make sure you give your provider a call immediately. If you have bleeding in any site from any cut or incision without pressure held onto it that lasts longer than 15 minutes, we'll probably need to know about that as well. And then if you have abdominal pain, um, definitely severe in anything that concerns you, give us a call. So let's review some of the substances that you should probably avoid in large quantities while you're on anticoagulants. Um, large doses of vitamin E, uh, preferably not more than the 400 international units that's recommended. Usually that's sometimes even within um, different vitamin supplements and stuff. That can actually interfere with the medications um, and how well they work within your body. Um, aconite, alfalfa. Angelica, an anesthesied, which is licorice or fennel, arnica, asafoetida, capus gun, which is hot chilies, celery, chamomile, fenugreek, feverfew, fish oil, garlic, ginger capsules, ginkgo, bilboa, horse chestnut, horse radish, meadow sweet, 
motherwort, poplar, prickly ash, quassia, red clover, Chinese earth, or willow. Um, another recommendation that we do recommend to you while you're on these anticoagulants is to you can go down to your local drugstore and pick up a meta alert bracelet that's indicating that you're on anticoagulants. Just in case of emergency, if no one is with you that knows any medications that you're on, it would be very helpful to any emergency medical, medical providers to know that you are on these medications. As far as taking heparin or low molecular weight heparin injections, it's really important to stay on the um, dosing regimen that has been prescribed by your medical provider. So this is a great thing for you to do for you and your baby to provide the safety that um, would be needed to carry, hopefully carry your baby to term.